Picture this, a time when television was more than just a screen. It was a portal to laughter, a gateway to irreverent humor that transcended generations. As you embarked on your journey through the rabbit hole of vintage TV, you stumbled upon a treasure trove of zany sketches, uproarious one-liners, and a cast of characters that etched their way into your memory. It was the year 1967, and Rowan and Martin's laugh and burst onto the scene like a technicolor dream. A whirlwind of psychedelic visuals and quick-fire gags that left you breathless. Do you remember that first moment? The screen flickered to life, and you found yourself immersed in a world where punchlines collided with political satire, where quirkiness reigned supreme, and the fourth wall was nothing more than a flimsy suggestion. The show dared to push the boundaries of comedy, daring you to keep up with its rapid-fire tempo. It was a sensation, a cultural touchstone that redefined television humor. And then, the characters. Oh, those unforgettable characters. From the iconic socket to me. Catchphrase to the sassy cocktail swigging lady. Each personality was a unique brushstroke on the canvas of laughter. The irrepressible energy of hosts Dan Rowan and Dick Martin was the glue that held this madcap carnival together, guiding you through a kaleidoscope of sketches, celebrity cameos, and surprise guest appearances that had you clutching your sides. But enough with the reminiscing. It's time to dive into the hidden gems that made Rowan and Martin's laugh and the comedic masterpiece it was. Brace yourself for a whirlwind tour of behind-the-scenes anecdotes, untold stories, and eyebrow-raising facts that will deepen your appreciation for this legendary show. From the birth of running gags to the origins of those notorious joke wall setups, get ready to uncover the secrets that kept America laughing week after week. So, dear reader, as we embark on this journey through the annals of television history, let your mind drift back to that first uproarious encounter with Rowan and Martin's laugh-in. What was your favorite skit? Which catchphrase left you quoting it for days? As we unlock the vault of trivia and tidbits, allow yourself a chuckle or two and a wistful smile. It's time to relive the magic, one factoid at a time. Buckle up, for the ride is about to begin. Get ready to be immersed in the wacky world of Rowan and Martin's laugh-in, where laughter knows no bounds and the unexpected is always right around the corner. Rowan and Martin's Laugh-In, a groundbreaking television series that aired from 1967 to 1973, emerged as a revolutionary force in comedy and entertainment. Created by Dan Rowan and Dick Martin, the show's origins lay in their stand-up comedy act and sketches. Set against a vibrant and psychedelic backdrop of the 60 seconds, the series presented a rapid-fire barrage of jokes, one-liners, and outrageous skits. Its unique style blended irreverent humor, political satire, and social commentary, becoming a cultural touchstone of its era. The show introduced a slew of iconic characters, such as the affable socket to me girl, the quirky Ernestine the telephone operator, and the enigmatic Farkle family. These characters, brought to life by a dynamic ensemble cast, contributed to the show's eclectic and zany atmosphere. With its fast-paced editing, laugh and embraced a fragmented and chaotic style often breaking the fourth wall and incorporating innovative visual effects. The impact of Rowan and Martin's laugh in on popular culture was profound. It played a pivotal role in shaping the comedic landscape of television, influencing future sketch comedies and variety shows. The show's catchphrases, including You Bet Your Sweet Bippy, and Here Come Da Judge, became part of the national lexicon. Moreover, Laugh-In's satirical take on politics and social issues reflected the changing attitudes of the 60 seconds, resonating with a generation in the midst of cultural upheaval. Random facts about the show, Goldie Hawn's giggle-filled persona launched her acting career and earned her an Academy Award. The show's rapid-fire format popularized The Joke Wall, a series of one-liners delivered by the cast in quick succession. Richard Nixon's cameo with the line socket to me showcased the series' influence and relevance in politics. The show's colorful and unconventional visual style drew inspiration from the emerging counterculture movement. Laugh and won multiple Emmy Awards and sustained high ratings throughout its run, validating its cultural impact. In conclusion, Rowan and Martin's laugh and defied conventions and delivered a fresh comedic experience that left an indelible mark on television history.
Its innovative style, memorable characters, and socio-political commentary set a new standard for entertainment, echoing its influence in subsequent decades. Unveiling the laughter, the fierce contest of Rowan and Martin's laugh in Socket to Me Girls in the vibrant tumult of the late 1960s. As television screens flickered with a kaleidoscope of cultural upheaval, one show emerged as a quirky yet indelible icon, Rowan and Martin's laugh in. Amid its rapid-fire skits and zany repartee, a recurring segment known as Socket to Me became a sensation, featuring unexpected dowsings that added an element of unpredictability to the show's already irreverent nature. However, behind those unforgettable gushes of water lay a surprising tale of casting trials and starlit rivalries. The search for the perfect Socket to Me girls took an intriguing turn, as two groups of starlets vied for the coveted roles. Group 1 showcased the talents of Lola Falana, Joey Heatherton, and the vivacious Chero, their charisma undeniably magnetic. Yet, a second group emerged, comprising the effervescent Goldie Hawn, the spirited Judy Karn, and the dynamic Teresa Graves. A fierce competition unfolded, and in a twist that would reverberate through television history, the latter trio triumphed. Goldie Hawn's endearing charm and her cohort's comedic synergy captured the hearts of viewers, etching their names into the annals of laugh and lore. Delving further into the show's dynamic, a revelation emerges about the sheer intensity of production. Had Rowan and Martin's laugh and been a motion picture instead of a television series, its average 234-page weekly script, a testament to its whirlwind pace, would have necessitated a staggering four months of filming. Yet, this frenetic energy lent the show an inimitable spark, its zany spirit undiminished by the lightning speed rehearsals and tapings that breathed life into each episode. While the socket to me phenomenon and the breakneck pace of production forged the show's legacy, a serendipitous harmony emerged in the summer of 1968. Dooley Pig meet Mark M and Shorty Long, two charismatic figures from the Laugh in Universe, soared to unprecedented heights on Billboard's pop and R&B charts with novelty songs revolving around the infectious catchphrase Here Comes the Judge. A testament to the show's cultural imprint, these musical escapades fused seamlessly with its irreverent humor, etching the catchphrase even deeper into the public consciousness. In the kaleidoscope of 1960s television, Rowan and Martin's laugh and remains a shivering gem, embodying the spirit of its era with an irrepressible verve. From the fierce competition of casting the socket to me girls to the whirlwind pace of production, and the unexpected musical reverberations. Laugh-In's impact endures, a testament to the electrifying convergence of talent, innovation, and cultural zeitgeist. A fresh twist behind Rowan and Martin's Laugh-In phenomenon in the annals of television history. Few shows have left as indelible a mark as the uproarious 1967 series Rowan and Martin's Laugh-In. Beyond the punchlines and skits that kept audiences in stitches, a fascinating backstory reveals the show's evolution into a cultural touchstone. Remarkably, it was a chance musical moment that birthed one of the show's iconic catchphrases. Producer George Schlatter's wife, Jeline Brand, struck gold when inspiration struck her while listening to Aretha Franklin's soulful rendition of Respect. Recognizing the potential for comedy gold, she proposed the infectious phrase socket to me as a recurring bit on the show. Little did she know that this offbeat idea would become a hallmark of the series, sparking laughter for years to come. As the show found its footing, a pair of young, ambitious writers from Toronto made their way into the laugh-filled fray. Lauren Michaels and Hart Pomerantz, previously unknown, joined the writing staff in 1968 as the show transitioned to a regular series. Their creative contributions quickly became evident, but a twist of fate led to their departure after just one season. Frustrated by what they perceived as an uneven distribution of credit, Michaels and Pomerantz returned to Canada, where they crafted a string of prime-time specials known as The Heart and Lorne Terrific Hour. While this venture garnered them fame, creative differences loomed large, and their partnership eventually dissolved. The impact of Rowan and Martin's laugh-in was undeniable. From its auspicious debut as a one-time special in September 1967, the show skyrocketed to prominence. Seizing the Monday night slot in January 1968, it soared to the pinnacle of television, reigning as the number one show for its initial two seasons. Yet, as the brightest stars of the comedy world departed to pursue individual careers, the show's luster gradually faded. By 1973, the curtain fell on this iconic series, marking the end of an era. 
Rowan and Martin's laughing remains a vivid testament to the ever-changing landscape of entertainment, fueled by unexpected moments of inspiration and marred by the challenges of creative collaboration. Its legacy endures as a symbol of irreverent humor and cultural commentary, an enduring reminder of the bygone television era that left an indelible mark. The 1967 TV series Rowan and Martin's Laugh and had its fair share of hidden gems that contributed to its quirky charm. Among these, the cocktail party segment stood out, often featuring uncredited appearances by Playboy centerfold models. The likes of Janice Pennington graced the screen, with her appearance even tying into her centerfold photo shoot. These models typically played the role of dancers or the subjects of Dick Martin's playful yet cliched propositions. Interestingly, Martin's personal life mirrored the show's playful tone, as he married and divorced playmate Dolly Reed, only to later reconcile and remarry. Another iconic aspect of the show was the catchphrase, Here Come the Judge, which gained prominence during a guest appearance by Sammy Davis Jr. The phrase paid tribute to the Chitlin Circuit comedian Dewey Pigmeat Markham. In a remarkable twist, Markham himself was eventually invited as a guest star on the show, with snippets of his routines even finding their way into a novelty record. The catchphrase's popularity was so immense that Baskin Robbins joined the frenzy by introducing an ice cream flavor named Here Come the Fudge. Even Pontiac hopped on the bandwagon, naming a model of their GTO the judge in 1968 and incorporating the same catchphrase into the car's advertisement. Amidst the laughter, one often overlooked facet was the show's sponsorship. Breck, renowned makers of hair products, lent their support as participating sponsors for the second and third seasons, adding a touch of glamour to the behind-the-scenes dynamics. Their contribution further solidified the show's place in pop culture history. Rowan and Martin's laugh-in not only provided belly laughs, but also held these intriguing anecdotes beneath its zany surface. Each episode delivered not only humor, but also a window into the zeitgeist of the time, capturing the spirit of the late 1960s in all its audacious glory. As we step back from the whimsical time capsule that is the 1967 TV series Rowan, and Martin's laugh in, it's like taking a stroll down memory lane lined with hilarity and charm. Each sketch, each punchline, and each quirky moment is a thread that weaves its way into the tapestry of our lives, reminding us of the power of laughter. It's not just a show, it's a piece of the past that found its way into our hearts. As you bid adieu to this journey, take a moment to pause and reflect on your personal connection with the show. Was it the zany characters, the rapid-fire jokes, or the way it pushed the boundaries of television comedy that captured your imagination? Perhaps it was a family tradition to gather around the TV, or maybe you stumbled upon it during a late-night rerun and found yourself in stitches. Whatever your story may be, let's keep the spirit of Rowan and Martin's laugh and alive. Share your favorite memories, the scenes that still make you chuckle, or the lessons and humor that you've carried forward. Your anecdotes are the living testament to the enduring impact of this timeless show. So, here's your invitation to join the chorus of laughter and nostalgia. Let's celebrate the quirks and jests that bridge generations. Thank you for taking the time to journey through the wacky wonderland of Rowan and Martin's laugh and with me. Your memories make it all the more vibrant, and your stories keep the magic alive. Warmly, your fellow laugh and enthusiast P.S. I can't wait to hear your thoughts and stories. Drop them below and let's keep the laughter rolling. Until then, keep embracing the joy that comes from the most unexpected corners of life. Stay groovy.